Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jitin Benedict and today's webinar is on the topic Hypothesis in Research Methodology. Hypothesis is so-called a little difficult topic to understand for many. Now, in today's webinar, we are going to approach Hypothesis in a very simple fashion or in a very um, simpleton fashion where things are much lucid and I'll be explaining Hypothesis in a very um, less complicated way okay so let's go to today's webinar to what do you mean by hypothesis now hypothesis is a tentative solution to a problem so a hypothesis is actually a statement which may be correct or may not be correct it is through an experiment we'll have to make sure that this particular statement is correct or not so we are before an experiment with with insufficient evidence we are making a, a statement that may be true or false so this is what is known as a hypothesis so i would just come again once so hypothesis is a tentative solution to a problem now this is actually a statement which may be correct or may not be now it is have, we have insufficient evidence but with this insufficient evidence we are making a statement which may be true or false and this statement is what is known as hypothesis so we need to test this particular statement and that may be in later later we call it hypothesis testing now we'll try to understand what is hypothesis and its characteristics so the characteristics of hypothesis are this hypothesis should be a clear statement there should not be any ambiguity in hypothesis statement. It should be precise, it should be testable, and it should be consistent with the facts and provide answer to the problem. It should also be logically simple and not contradicting to the established facts already. Okay, so these are the characteristics of hypothesis. Now, at what juncture does a hypothesis begin? Now, when do we make a hypothesis? A researcher makes hypothesis uh, on what he or she has observed and what he or she already knows to be true. So, it is based on some literature reading that the researcher makes a hypothesis. No, simply without without any understanding, we cannot make a hypothesis. So, we you need to read about that particular topic you are researching on, that you are studying on, little bit in detail, so that you already know that these kind of facts already exist. So based on the facts that is already existing, you make a statement. Now, what do you do with the hypothesis? The hypothesis is like a scientist that leads him or her to make a prediction that can be tested in an investigation. Okay, so these are the basis of hypothesis. Now, uh, let's take a very common example of a very common statement which I'd be using throughout in variables as well as in hypothesis webinars that is if you eat ice cream do you fall sick no I will not make it as a question I'll make it as a statement eating ice cream makes you fall sick so this is the statement that I'm making so there are two types of hypothesis that is null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis now uh, what do you mean by null and what do you mean by alternate hypothesis? I'm trying to explain with this ice cream example. Now, eating ice cream has no relationship with falling sick. So the statement was, when you eat ice cream or eating ice creams make you fall sick. So I'm negating it. I'm putting it like the, on the other way. Eating ice cream has no relationship with falling sick. Whereas I'm making another statement, eating ice cream has a relationship with falling sick. Okay, now I've made two statements, positive and a negative one. Now we'll try to understand which one is alternate and which one is the null hypothesis. Now, null hypothesis has no statistical significance, whereas alternate hypothesis has statistical significance between the two variables, which means null hypothesis say that there is no relationship no significance between the variables whereas alternate hypothesis say that there is a significant relationship between the two variables now null hypothesis is the hypothesis or the statement which the researcher is trying to disprove here the statement is eating ice creams leads to falling sick now, what is the relation? What is the statement that you are trying to disprove? There is no relationship. 
I'm I'm trying to say that there is a relationship. So I will put the null hypothesis as there is no relationship because when you eat ice cream, you do not fall sick. That is what is the null hypothesis. Now the researcher is trying to approve the alternate hypothesis. So I'll make the statement as there is a relationship between eating ice cream and falling sick. Now uh, here. In this particular example, in the null hypothesis, individual is free from disease, whereas in alternate hypothesis, individual has disease. And uh, in null hypothesis, the relationship could be due to chance, like eating ice cream and falling sick could be a chance, maybe or may not be. But here, in alternate hypothesis, you are statistically proving with the help of a research and the relationship is not due to chance, but it is due to proven statistics with data. So what happens ultimately is when H1 is accepted, H, H0 is rejected, H0 is rejected, vice versa. If H0 is rejected, H1 is accepted. That is, if eating ice cream has no relationship with falling sick, that is the null hypothesis. If, you're, if that falls to be true, then obviously the other one is false. You, you, uh, accept the null hypothesis and you reject the alternate hypothesis or the other way if the other one is true eating ice cream has a relationship in falling sick then you accept the null uh, alternate hypothesis and you reject the null hypothesis so uh, the null hypothesis is a statement that is proposed with the intent of rejecting uh, we want to show that now we have another example like we want to show that sales and advertisement budget are related now if the advertisement budget is high, if you have if you if you have a lot of money for advertisement and you make a very good advertisement, then obviously your sales goes high. Now, what will happen? How will you frame the H naught? How will you frame the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis can be framed like there is no relationship between sales and advertisement budget. On the contrary, I think uh, when I am saying this, you will be thinking what could be the alternate hypothesis? Yes. When alternate hypothesis would be something like uh, it's a statement that is proposed with the intent of accepting. Now we want to show that sales and advertisement budget are related. So your alternate hypothesis would be something like there is a relationship between sales and advertisement budget. Okay, now um, we'll go with an example or with a scenario, a question like this. If, maybe a student or, or a girl named Carmel notices that the tomato plant closest to her neighbor's yard is much taller than any of her other plants in the garden bed. She also notices that neighbor turns on her sprinkler system every day and that some of this water reaches only her big plant. The scientist creates a question like this. Does daily watering from a sprinkler make the tomato plant grow faster than other tomato plants? So this is the example of a hypothesis creation. Now we can make null as well as alternate hypothesis out of this. Now how do you make the null as well as alternate hypothesis out of this? Now the question here is, does the daily watering from a sprinkler do make tomato plant grow faster? Okay, so we'll make the null hypothesis like this. Daily watering from a sprinkler does not make a tomato plant grow faster than other tomato plants. Whereas the alternate hypothesis can be framed like daily watering from a sprinkler make a tomato plant grow faster than other tomato plants. Now we'll look at one more example. Um, students who are God fearing scores good marks. Now, people who pray a lot, people who are God-fearing, do they get good marks? Now, we should make null as well as alternate hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis could be framed like, students who are God-fearing does not score good marks. And the alternate hypothesis would be like, students who are God-fearing scores good marks. I hope it is clear now. And the last one, the last example could be something like this. Exposure to social media has an impact on attention span of students. The null hypothesis would be like um, exposure to social media has no impact on the attention span of the students. 
and the null alternate hypothesis would be the opposite of this exposure to social media has an impact on the attention span of students so we are trying to prove that it has an impact okay so we will just try to summarize as what happened in today's session we were trying to explain what is hypothesis and what are the two types of hypothesis that is null and the alternate hypothesis so null hypothesis has no statistical significance and in alternate you have statistical significance now null hypothesis is something that the research is trying to disprove the alternate hypothesis is something that the research is trying to prove and uh, the relationship in null hypothesis due to chance whereas in alternate hypothesis relationship is not due to chance but is due to statistical proven data now when h1 is accepted h0 is rejected so this is a small overview on what is hypothesis uh, thanks for watching my video this is jitin benedict